Hello, good afternoon and welcome to this NAF video. In our videos, we'll be talking about the restaurant concept creation and all the crafts involved. I'm joined today by Michael Freeman, who's a world-class photographer. Michael has over four decades experience in editorial photography and is also the author of 155 books, including 70 on photography alone. Thank you very much, Michael, for joining us today. So I guess the first question, Michael, would be a simple question. What's the difference between food photography and other kinds of photography? Well, for a photographer, the main difference, I suppose, is that food doesn't move, it doesn't answer back, which a lot of other subjects do. So in that sense, uh, it makes life easy. However, the purpose of food photography is almost always to make it look appetizing. No surprise there. And yet, we're just producing a still photograph. So, texture is not available, taste is not available, the aroma is not available. And yet, those are the qualities that you want to get across in a single still image. You're talking about trends or style of photography that are copied on and on by, by um, the, due to the access, uh, due to people using Instagram. So, on one hand, it's great because it gives you access. You don't have to travel around the world to see all these cuisine and these chefs working and photographers mm. working. But it kind of limits the creativity because everybody copies each other. Yeah. And as such, I see a lot of uh, food photographers just always do the same picture, whichever restaurant they work for. And they don't actually create a style that suits the restaurant and, and the concept itself. And I find that's uh, a bit of a shame, really. Is it, is it possible to learn how to shoot food properly, not to the professional level, but good enough so you can do your own Instagram, for example. Of course it is, of course it is. But you do need to understand the, the basic principles of um, the camera position, the framing and the lighting. Mm -hmm. But the, it's not rocket science. Because when we work at Hackersam together, in particular, it, it had two prominent brands. And one was Hackersam itself, mm -hmm. and the other was Yawacha. So, Hakkasan already had a, a design style. What I had to do was create um, a manual to make sure that all around the world, photographers in different Hakkasan and different Yawacha restaurants would be presenting the same style. And it was an easy one in that already the two brands had a different feeling and identity and we push that in the photography yeah so the Hakkasan style was dark rich black with gold and with blue the the Aachi style was light bright airy mm -hmm. daytime so yeah. Hakkasan is evening mm -hmm. Aachi is on the terrace and, it, and, and flooded with light so you see you can do different styles when you reach a certain level of, uh, of quality in some of food photography and you do brand photography, we call it, which is magazine quality for large restaurant groups like Hakkasan or any of these large groups, would you say it's imperative to do it, that the food photography happens in the studio or it's still okay to do it within the restaurant? It's still feasible, achievable to it's do it? A, this is a real, there are many factors involved in this. There's pros and cons. And the idea of doing it on the table just seems natural, but it depends what it looks like. Now, here, we're in very attractive daylit, um, old-fashioned restaurant setting, and it's got a nice atmosphere already. Th that's a strong argument for shooting here. Many restaurants are, particularly if we're talking about evening, about nighttime, which is you know where most of the expenditure goes, uh, it's dark and it's spotlit. Mm -hmm. So the lighting is doing, doing things other than showing off the food. It's setting the atmosphere for the evening. And quite often, um, the lighting that establishes an attractive atmosphere for guests does the food no favors whatsoever. As you can see on Instagram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, yep. you know, hard light. Um, Flashes that kill the... Yeah, things like that. The problem is if you go into a studio, you're in a kind of limbo setting. There are ways of, of combining the two, which is you shoot in the studio for full lighting control, which is what you've really got there. Um, and then you can shoot in the same angle 
ex measure it exactly the same angle the, the, the table setting is going to go on, mm -hmm. and you can composite the two together. You can put one on the other. We've seen that on the projects we did during COVID, uh, we created a restaurant concept in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And because of COVID, we could not travel. So with the team, we shot the food in London, yeah. asked the Saudi uh, client to organize uh, an interior shot, yeah. um, a shooting of the, of, the, of the restaurant. And then on post-production, we managed to paste the, yeah. uh, the dish on the, on the, the, the plates on the, on the background. And it, it gave a sense of, Obviously, you know, um, location and being within the, no, the environment well, of the restaurant. And you do it honestly. But what that does is it transfers, it makes the shooting more predictable, mm -hmm. which is absolutely what you want because you're, you're going to be shooting several dishes at a time. The food has to be next to the kitchen. So the kitchen. I was going to say, you can create a small studio within the restaurant if the restaurant is not open. Very rarely you have a photo. Uh, studio right next to a kitchen. Well-run restaurants are extremely streamlined. Especially in these days. You no, know, it's like running an airline. <laughs> you know, the aircraft is only stays still for about an hour. Yep. Anywhere, mm -hmm. at any time. There are three important roles within food photography. So the photographer, the chef, and the stylist. But from your experience, how would you describe the role of the, the stylist? It depends on the kind of food. I mean, you know, when, in a michelin star restaurant, the, the, the chef is probably yeah. the stylist, yeah. right? Um, well, or the or his sous chef. Or, mm -hmm. the, the very best is, situation of all is to have three people on set. Chef, stylist and photographer. Um, and all, you know, happy to interact and mm -hmm. nobody getting you know, <laughs> on yeah. too much of a high horse. Uh, there could be some ego issues with that. Uh, that's yes, that's always possible. Of but course. you know, for instance, one thing, the basic structure of the food is important and the garnish is something that just gets on top. Mm -hmm. so, some microgreens or whatever. And some chefs may not pay too much attention to the actual final presentation of that detail. Mm -hmm. The photographer will. Yep. I mean, the garnish, which is incredibly important in a food shot, because it adds, among other things, well, colour, uh, it, it, it's got to be in the right place. Absolutely. So you end up with tweezers, moving stuff around and make sure, you know, and, and also the quality. We've seen f the impact of good food photography session we, 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 we did together, where it turned into a workshop and the chef was involved into working with us on the presentation of the dish. And as a result, the, the presentation improved. Um, because I think you can have it the other way. Of course, your role is to make the food look as good as possible during the shoot, but you may also have a long-term impact on raising questions and, and, um, and the standards in terms of uh, presentation. That, very, very good point indeed, absolutely. Um, done well, uh, done con in a considered way. Uh, food photography can provide feedback. Mm -hmm. Excuse the pun, it's another lens with which to look at the dishes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about your, your knowledge about smartphone technology and uh, taking pictures with phones, whether they're Android or, or iPhone? And uh, are there um, a reliable tool for food photography? Absolutely they are. They won't help the lighting. And as I said, lighting you know, mm. lighting, 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 really. Yeah. Take care of that and you've taken care of just about everything. But um, a smartphone itself is absolutely a good camera. I mean, to be honest, all the interesting uh, technological improvements in cameras are going on inside phones mm -hmm. um, with the software, AI, machine learning. Um, and a lot of photographers don't like to hear this and object to it <laughs> strongly and say, oh, rubbish, you know, only a big camera can do this. It's got a proper lens, etc." Any camera is fit for purpose because the work has to go into preparing that food, presenting it and the lighting. Um, and that's something you can do without a camera, right? And, and that's the way to buy my most food photography happens. It's, it, it, it happens without the camera. Mm. Then, then you photograph what you've all worked on. And the photographer, if he's competent, knows how to do that without any 
messing about. About inspiration, where do you get your inspiration from? Like any photographer, I spend um, a lot of time uh, regularly looking at other photographs, looking at, the, looking at other photographers, shows, uh, various curated websites. I like to keep on top of what's happening. You were mentioning the atmosphere, how to get the atmosphere, the smell and the ambiance into the picture. Uh, do you have examples or tips on how to do that? Well, the lighting in food photography is especially important. Oh. By using the lighting very carefully and actually quite specifically, I think, that you can convey something at least of the texture. And the, the solution there is to have quite a large amount of the light coming from above and slightly in front of the camera. In other words, you're looking, you're looking at reflected light that's coming toward you. Because mm -hmm. that way, with, particularly with uh, wet dishes, tomato, aubergine, um, the, or caviar, mm -hmm. then, um, then you, get, um, you get a nice uh, feeling of the reflection mm -hmm. of the light. There is, though, the question of style mm. and fashion. And as in any genre of photography, the fashion changes. Um, I'm talking about the fashion of, of shooting food, yep. quite apart from fashions within food themselves. I'd say that the, the most efficient way of lighting most food so that it looks good, as if you're about to eat it, is um, using a very broad light that's directional, but isn't casting hard-edged shadows and then doing whatever you need to fill in or add little spotlights or, or whatever. However, the, within the last few years, there's been um, a fashionable trend towards starting with drinks, actually, but moving also towards food, at least editorially, to having a, a kind of hard-edged cast shadow style. You know, when you get um, to go to the drinks. So you have a cocktail and if you have a very hard spot, mm -hmm. which looks like the sun shining through it, you'll get, you know, an attractive shadow with those funny shapes. So you can see that there's a certain kind of graphic interest in that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's fashionable, like it or not, that is a fashion, but I it doesn't make food look good. I like to, uh, what do you think of the idea that food photography is a science, is not an art. Um, and I say that because you're obviously describing all the technique, which you find in art. You have to master the technique before you go into more artistic territory. But the fact that art can give you, can convey many feelings. You know, it can make you, make you feel sad, nostalgic, mm -hmm. uh, anxious, happy, happy or unhappy. Whereas food photography only wants to be appetizing, right? Yes, it doesn't want to disgust you. <laughs> so there, there is an argument to say that it's not an art. Well, you know, you say science and art, but science and art are combined like that. They can and, be, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, well, in order to make... A lot of art needs some science. And there's artistry in science. Yeah. Uh, there's and yeah. beauty in mathematics. Sure. And Leonardo painted the Mona Lisa, but he invented all kinds of things. So perhaps food photography is a craft. I... Absolutely. To me, it's more of a craft. Being a, a chef well, is a craft, and a there's well crafted beneath. photograph is is something that that's, uh, that gives pleasure. Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> Thank you very much, Michael. It's great to have you. Thank yeah. you.